Hi, I'm Peter McTavish and welcome back to another DCG tutorial. So in this one, as you see there, we're doing question B2 from the 2009 paper, so section B. It's a coordinate geometry question, and as always, let's read through it. So the 3D graphic shows a trophy, which is to be awarded to the best student in the DCG class. The trophy consists of two interlocking coloured glass set squares. The marble base, which is shown in 3D graphics, should be ignored for the purpose of your drawing. Uh, the horizontal vertical coordinates uh, for the outer points of the intersecting triangular planes ABC and DEF are given below. Okay, so there are your coordinates, your in, up, down. So part A, draw the plan elevation of the intersecting planes. B, determine the line of intersection between the planes. C, determine the hydrolagal between the planes. And D is the last part there, the inner triangle of the 45 degree set square triangle ABC is offset 10 mil from the outer triangle. Draw the plane elevation of the inner triangle. So this is a corner geometry question, one of the harder ones because it's a six point corner geometry question. None of the points are common to both planes, so therefore you have two completely separate planes. Now part A, draw the plan elevation of the intersecting planes. All you're doing there is using your coordinates to come in off the edge of the page, go up for the height and elevation, down for the distance and plan. Okay, so in, up, down. So we do the part A first, we draw the plan elevation of both and we keep them light because we don't know what's sitting in front of the other. Okay, and we'll fast forward to this. Okay, so that is the elevation plan of your two planes done. Okay, so your coordinates are the distance in and then you go up and down, all right? So that's the plan elevation, that's part A. Uh, part B then, determine the line in section between the planes. So this is why this one is a hard one because it's a 6.1. And what you do is, what you have to do is do a cut section across both planes. So you're gonna draw a line parallel to X1 and across both planes. What that will do is give you two points on each plane. Those, both, those two points in plan will equal a line and the two lines should intersect and will give you a point on the line section. Now, they've given you a nice one here because AC is parallel to the XY line already. Not only is it giving you two points on the ABC triangle, i.e. points A and C, so it's going to cut the DE line here and it's going to cut the DF line there. All right, so let's label those points. So we're using the AC line to find our points. It cuts the DE triangle or line there, call that point zero, and it cuts the DF line here, we call that point one. Now it's very important that you project your points back down to the corresponding lines and plan. So if zero is on the DE line in elevation, it must be on the DE line in plan. So therefore this is point zero. If point one is on the DF line in elevation, it must be on the DF line in plan, which is here, that's point one. So if we cross them, zero and one join up, because they're on the plane DEF. A and C join up on the plane ABC, and where they meet gives you a point on the line in section. So where they meet there, that has to be a point on line in section. Now, no point on either of these are common to each other, therefore we need to do another cut section. So let's see, if we bring across maybe point F, draw a line parallel to X, Y line cross point F, make sure it cuts both triangles. So it cuts itself again here, and it cuts the ABC triangle there and there. So let's label those. So it cuts its own triangle here, label that point two, two will go back to F1, and it cuts ABC triangle here, 
call that point three, and here, call that point four. Project points two, three, and four back down to plan to their corresponding lines. And you join them up according to the triangle. So F1 joins back to two. And points three and four join back to each other because they're on the ABC plane. That now is another point on our line of section. Therefore, if you join the two, it'll give you your line of section. That can go in strong. Now it's important here to note that the line of section has to be common to both triangles. So therefore, I stop at the first line I meet, so I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to go outside of an area that isn't common to both triangles. So if you see here, this area inside here is common to both of them in the plan. If you were to continue out, you're only in the DEF triangle and no longer in the ABC one. So the line section has to be common to both. So this point is on the AC line, this point is on the BC line. Project them back up to the elevation and draw an elevation. That is part B done. Determine the line of section between the planes. So remember, it's cut section. You must cut across both planes and find points, and bring them back down. And where your two lines intersect and cross will give you a point on the line of section. Now, next step is C. Determine the dihedral angle between the planes. So now that we have the line of section, we need to do two offset reviews. So the first view is going to be perpendicular to the line section. The second view is going to be parallel. The reason you do the first one perpendicular is so that you can find a true length of the line section. And if you can find a true length of that, so if you do a true length, if you find a true length of it, you can do a point view of it, i.e. the parallel auxiliary view. And if you get a point view of the line section, you should see the dihedral angle between both planes. So let's say we have our line section. It doesn't matter which view you go from. So I could project from this one, get my heights down or project up this direction here, get my heights up. I think I'll project up here to the right hand side. So you need to project all your points from plan up perpendicular to the line section. So I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to use the adjustment set square and then you put in a X1, Y1 parallel to it and get your heights from the elevation. Okay, so that is your first auxiliary review done. Uh, it's an auxiliary elevation projected perpendicular from the line section. The line section and the edges of it must be projected up to the lines that they were cutting here in the plan. So this edge here is on the BC line, this edge is on the AC line. So again, on the AC line there and BC line here. This is now a true length. If that's a true length and we go and do another auxiliary review parallel to that point or to that line, we get a point view of it down here and hope that what that should give you then is your two planes as edge views. Okay, so you see the two planes, A, B, C and D, E, F as edge views and you'll be able to get the hydrogen angle. This time we're projecting from the auxiliary view, so your distances are going to come from the X1, Y1 back to plan. Okay, and I'm going to fast forward through this as well. But what I'm going to do is project the X1, Y1 back to my first point, in this case point C and put in a dash and light, just to save me a bit of room. Okay, and that view can go in strong because they're edge views and there's nothing else going over them. And there you get edge views of the planes and you can see 
the dihedral angle between them. Now, if you can see there, my point D3 is slightly off. It should be a straight line, it's an edge view, so you shouldn't have an angle between the points. So I'm off there by maybe a mil or two. So that could be from them getting the measurements from their, all the projections, my lead not being sharpened to a, a fine tip. So don't worry about it, just join them in in a straight line, because it's going to be an edge view, it should be a straight line, or even F could be small but off, either or. Join them in and where they intersect then shows you your dihedral angle. Now I'm gonna, it doesn't ask for the elevation plan, auxiliary views to be put in, in strong and so on. But I'm gonna work backwards and put them in strong to show what would be in strong, where the hidden detail would be. So if you're looking, and now this isn't asked, not asked, but we put it in anyways, and I'm gonna fast forward through it fairly quickly. You're looking in from this direction. So the first point you see, the first point you come across back in your auxiliary view here is point A. Therefore, A should be strong to the line section. So in this case, it's strong here, go to the line section, that means D will be hidden detail behind it. Same thing, E is one of your first points, so that should be, again, strong outside here. And that's how you do it. You work your way back, look at the direction you're coming from and draw them in strong. Now the next part of the question is part D and it says the inner triangle in the 45 degree set square triangle ABC is offset 10 mil from the outer triangle. Draw the plan elevation of the inner triangle. Okay, so to put the inner triangle into the elevation of ABC and also the plan. So in order to do that, we need to figure out how to get a true shape of the triangle ABC. So first thing we need to look at is find the true length of at least one of the lines. So you can see there in the plan elevation, the line AC is parallel to the XY line in both views. So that tells us that the AC line is a true length in both of our views. So if we did a point view of that line AC, we'd get a true height for B. So I'm going to project out here from AC and parallel to XY line so it's nice and handy where we can project out parallel so I'm doing auxiliary elevation of and I'm going to put this in a different color I might go with green or something just so it stands out from everything else so I'm going to do an auxiliary elevation here this is X1 Y1 Because AC is a true length, if we do an auxiliary elevation and get the true height of B, we can do a true shape. So, projecting out from AC, we're going to get our heights from the elevation. Again, I'm going to save a bit of room, put in a datum line. So that means B is on our point here. So, this is B1. and our height for AC is here. So what we're getting there is a point view of the line AC, which is giving us true height of the triangle ABC. So if this is a true height of the triangle, we can do, do a true shape of it, draw the inner triangle, and work our way backwards. So this is a true height. I need to project down perpendicular to this now, so use the adjustable set square. So we're projecting from this view, which means we're going from the X1, Y1 back to the plan. Just in case, I'm going to put in another datum line, just to save me a bit of room. So that means that, I'm going to have to put in our X, Y line. So A2 will be on the line here. The distance back here is the true length distance there for AC, because it all has to be true length, so this is 
see through off the page, of course, why wouldn't it be? So this is C2 down here off the page. And now, as I've said before in other questions, if you do go off the page, just add another sheet. That can be done in the exam, no other. And this is B2. Now, we'll join them all up will give us a true shape of the triangle ABC. And it told us the inner triangle is offset 10 mil. So if we measure 10 mil of all of those edges and draw parallel lines, we'll get the inner triangle. So that's now our inner triangle and we'll label those points. So all we need to do now is project them back to our first circuit review here. That will give us our distance here from A to C and that will be our point then above B and we can draw it in. Okay, so point six is going to be directly above point B here. So this is point six. Points five and seven are along our line here. How do we find where they are? The 10 mil off or from the edge here. So it's um, offset 10 mil, which means it's parallel. It's parallel to the edge. So therefore it should be parallel to the edge here as well. So if we project the line A1, B1, from point six, you give us our point there, which would be point seven, and we do the same the other side. So that's the plan of it done. Uh, just put it in green so it stands out from the rest of the strong lines there. Now project it up to the elevation. Now, there are lines projected up. How do we find the height from up here in the elevation? Remember, you project from the plan here, so this is an auxiliary elevation. Therefore, the heights from the X, Y line up to your point will be the same here. And remember, we went from the datum, so get your distance from the X1, Y1 up to your point, say point six, mark that distance up from the datum, and do that with all three. Now, that is the plan elevation of that inner triangle put in. And you can see there, that's a green, just so it stands out from the rest. Okay, so like the past couple of videos, this one has been a request, as you see here. So if there's any questions you'd like to see done, again, let me know in the comment section. And as always, hope that helped, and we'll see you in the next one.